This is your AQA GCC Physics Paper 1 live stream the night before. I'm going to go through a whole load of things that I think are just really important that you just remember. Um, please do tell me in the chat if uh, this is coming through loud and clear to you. Uh, this is going to be as I say, some key things for you to remember. It's not going to be absolutely everything in Paper 1, although I am going to cover every part. Um, but these are some things that I think the students get kind of wrong. and I'm going to jump into it in a minute. At the end, I will do a little Q&A session. I've got the visualizer, uh, visualizer. <laughs> I've got the visualizer ready to go, um, and so we'll we'll have that time at the end if you want to ask any questions. So I'm going to kind of power through them, and if you want to go back to any slides, then you can. Uh, okay, we're ready to go. I've got the um, thumbnail behind me. How about that? Okay, I feel like it's not quite looking that pro, is it? But uh, here we go. Let's go into the power. <laughs> All right, and I hope maths and everything went well with you today. Um, I know it's pretty much. I'm going to come back and do some uh, OCR stuff, OCR gateway stuff after this. Um, so you might want to come back for that one. I've got about half an hour for this stream and then about half an hour for that stream. And um, basically, let's do this, okay? Um, this is for the AQA paper one. Okay, so this is first the energy stores and transfers. I think we just remember all the stores as chemical. What goes there in number one, that's thermal, kinetic, gravitational, elastic, nuclear, electrostatic, and if you guessed the last one, that's magnetic. Uh, four transfers, okay, so you've got eight stores and you've got four transfers to remember, and really just think about those things. They are identify one store, talk about that emptying, identify another store, that one fills, and state the transfer between them. So four transfers are mechanical works, so that's with forces, um, Electrical work, that's anything with electri electrical current basically, heating by particles, which is con conduction, convection, and then also um, radiation. Now this, um, unfortunately this one puts me to the, to the side there, so let's just cut that so you can see this one here. Always be thinking about um, one store empties and another one fills. Okay, that's my little diagram there. Okay, explain also, the last one, sorry, was heating by radiation, so that's waves. So always talk about, in, in terms of starting stores, um, decreasing and other stores increasing. Identify the transfer that takes place uh, to move the energy from store to store. So energy analysis, remember, is all about that law of conservation of energy. Energy cannot be, what's, like, what's going there, created or destroyed, just transferred from place to place or store to store. Okay, uh, therefore calculating one store using the equation and making it equal to another can allow us to calculate the unknown. So energy analysis is all about like equations and being able to calculate the unknowns. So I'll just get rid of these things because they're annoying me and occasionally I'm going to have to get rid of my webcam, aren't I? Okay, so there I am, I'm off screen now. So efficiency is defined as the ratio of useful output energy to the total input energy. It can be expressed as either a percentage or as a decimal. You need to memorize that equation, make sure that you know it. Energy is a useful um, way of calculating, that's all it is. So energy is power times time. I've done a little uh, example down here. So if the power was 200 watts and the time was 1800 seconds, then energy is power times time, 200 times 1800, and that is your energy, which is in joules. So that's 360,000 joules. If you wanted to work in kilowatt hours, because you were, for example, using uh, large numbers for um, large numbers of electricity, large numbers of energy for domestic or commercial use, then you'd need to use the kilowatt and the hour. That's what that one is down there. Okay, so this is a practical, this is specific heat capacity. Essentially, all you're doing is using energy analysis, and this is energy analysis, what we're talking about here. What we're talking about, we're talking about energy analysis, we're talking about make one top form of energy equal to another store of energy. One store equals another store, and that allows you to make calculations. Okay, so moving back through. So um, what you do in this practical, memorize this explanation of all your core practicals. Uh, this is one that could come up tomorrow for AQA. By the way, um, OCR, I'm coming back to the OCR stream just after this one. Um, measure the PD with a voltmeter in parallel across a heater. And loads of people, guys, don't, they say what to measure, but they don't say what to measure it with or how to use the thing. So when you're talking about your core practicals, make sure you state how to measure the thing and what with as well. Measure time with a stopwatch. Calculate the energy supplied. Ah. Calculate the energy supplied using VIT. 
and um, use that equation there at the top there. Make this energy equal to the change in thermal energy. Measure mass with a top pan balance. Measure the temperature change with a thermometer by using the temperature before and after heating and working out the difference. So that so just got to kind of get that description of the practical in there. So when you evaluate energy sources, always evaluate energy resources in the specific uh, context of the question. That's what that word is there. I don't know why I put these things here. Well, I do know because it's supposed to get you thinking about what's supposed to go there as well. Make comparative statements. Uh, so one type of power station may produce more energy per kilogram of fuel than another. Don't just say produce a lot of energy per kilogram, but more than another. Give detailed descriptions of any environmental considerations. So for example, fossil fuel power stations, they release CO2 into the atmosphere, which contributes to global warming, whereas nuclear power stations do not. Consider how long and how abundant the energy resource is. Okay, so fossil fuels are, they are non-renewable. Okay, they do not get replaced at the rate we're using them. Whereas renewable resources like wind, solar, hydro are renewable and so come back as quickly as we can use them. So that's the definition of renewable. Use that definition in your answer. Consider changing the change in demand for energy in your answer. So how does demand change maybe in the day, maybe over years, etc. For example, dem demand is greater in the 21st century because of increasing population. So more devices as well. We consume a lot more electricity to do all these things that we do. Um, and demand is greater in the daytime than in nighttime. So these are all the things. Uh, video's gone down on my feed, it seems. Can you just let me know if it's still going for you wherever you are watching? Um, this is a practical to measure density. Remember, there's two types of shapes that you might be asked to do. Uh, one is a regular shape. Make sure you memorize that equation as well. Is it still going? It seems to still be going apart from on, on my live dashboard. So just can you just give me a heads up if you can still hear me? If not, I might just need to pause here. Yeah, video going good. All right, sorry about that. Okay, then. Um, so that's uh, that's a nuisance that it's not showing on my screen here. Okay, so for a regular shape, measure the length, the width, the height of the ruler. Calculate the volume um, from length times width times height. For an irregular shape, then you need to use a displacement can or indeed a measuring cylinder by like submerging the object. And always so me measure um, the mass with a balance. Okay, that's great. So we're still up. That's great. So temperature versus energy. Temperature is different to energy. Okay, temperature is the um, average kinetic energy of the particles, basically. So specific heat capacity is the energy required to raise one kilogram of material by one degree Celsius. Specific latent heat is the energy to change the state of one kilogram. And remember, there's two for uh, change of state. Thank you, guys. Thanks for, hope this is really useful for you. Energy is measured, remember, in joules and temperature is measured in degrees C or degrees Kelvin. You need to know how to convert degrees Kelvin into Celsius and basically zero degrees uh, Celsius is 273 degrees Kelvin. So you have to add or minus 273 depending on which way you're going there. Temperature is the average kinetic energy of the particles. So during a change of state, the average kinetic energy doesn't, um, the average kinetic energy doesn't uh, change the change of state change the energy goes to raising the internal energy by moving the things further apart but it doesn't change the actual average kinetic energy so what's that where the five goes vaporization is between a liquid and a gas and between a solid and a liquid is fusion okay so Boyle's law next one which is the relationship between pressure and volume so pressure is inversely proportional to volume double the pressure half the volume so that can be expressed as pressure times volume is a constant this is only on triple by the way um, if or you could say pressure um, doubles then volume halves okay um, the one way to do this is to say to yourself well pressure times volume um, before is equal to pressure times volume afterwards so that little question there work through those numbers there before you've got 200 pascals the volume before is 10 meters cubed if the pressure afterwards is double that, then the volume must have halved. Okay, next one. Uh, I'm going to come back because, you know, it's nice nice to be on screen for you guys. <laughs> maybe I can make myself a little bit smaller and put myself over in this corner. How about that? Or maybe it just doesn't matter whether I'm on screen or not. Screen or not. You tell me. There we are. I'm in this corner now. Um, <laughs> So this is an equation that you get given, so um, select it, okay? Uh, this is pressure is height times density times G, okay? In other words, if you double the depth, you double the pressure. If you double the um, 
density, you also double the pressure. If you uh, you could sub that, you could if you double the gravitational field strength, then you double the pressure as well. You could state that in terms of saying directly proportional, so pressure is directly proportional to depth. You could say it in terms of pressure is directly proportional to density, directly proportional to g. Make sure you can use those words and say directly proportional or straight line through the origin that type of thing to describe that type of trend. Okay, so remember G is 10 newtons per kilogram or 10 meters per second uh, on Earth. I think AQA actually you need to do it as 9.8. Okay, so moving on. Um, kinetic energy, what goes there? What's the one that people often miss off on their um, on kinetic energy equation that you need to remember? They forget the squared. Okay, they forget the squared. So you don't forget the squared there. I think the... Uh, me in the corner is kind of distracting me a little bit so i'm just gonna probably bin that in a little while <laughs> um okay so remember that one half mv squared so kinetic energy is energy stored in something because it's moving double the speed quadruple the energy so um there's an example calculation mass is 0.25 kilograms you always use mass in kilograms don't forget speed in meters per second and um half times 0.25 times four squared gives you two joules Okay, I would suggest you remember this rearrange form down here. And um, that is the rearranging for speed. Speed is root 2ek over m. I just remember that because if you remember that, then you don't need to do that rearranging in the exam. Work done. Then work done is the energy transferred mechanically by forces, basically is the definition of that. Okay, so force times a distance. Distance in the line of action of the force. Okay, power. Um, this is just me being silly really but this is important rate of transfer of energy and then a little joke for you what well what what a joule per second oh i don't know i find that funny um <laughs> i don't really find it that funny but anyway moving on so elastic strain energy is the energy transferred in stretching that you need to use so in this part of the, your gcse they would give you the spring constant and you'd have to use that half times the spring constant times the extension squared and again don't forget your squared and don't forget to use si units so extension in meters if you want energy in joules that's what people often forget with that gravitational potential energy energy stored in something because it's high up in a gravity field in a gravitational field um current then so now we're on to the electricity bit i'm sure you're all looking forward to the electricity bit if you have to name you tell me what is the bit of the uh aqa gcc that you're looking forward to least in the chat just now okay you tell, tell me which one is your worst bit in the chat just now so anyway you remember this as charge flow is current times time current is therefore a rate of flow of charge and here's a little example calculation, charge divided by time, charge flow divided by time, five coulombs in two minutes. So what numbers are gonna go there? It's not two minutes, it's 120 seconds. So make sure you use time in seconds and it comes a 0.042 amps. Put that through the calculator, um, make sure you can round that and they might ask you to round it to a specific number of two of significant figures. Here we've got two sig figs. Okay, so potential difference. Energy is the, um, defined as charge times potential difference or really I think it's better to define what a voltage is here or a potential difference is is the energy per unit charge okay so energy per unit charge um, is what a uh, volt is what a potential difference is so that's that one there and again an example so if you've got 150 joules for five coulombs of charge you've got 150 over five um, energy over charge 30 volts okay so that's exactly what a potential difference is here's that IV characteristics that ICRA is not looking forward to then they're really a bit of an application of V equals IR I'll get myself off the screen just now because I'm in the way again um, and so what you're going to do in this experiment is you're going to vary the supply PD you're going to measure current through the component with an ammeter remember the ammeter is in series uh, voltmeter in parallel yeah this is a bit then um, you're going to uh, measure I uh, say potential difference and current and plot potential difference against current so the fixed resistor is the one on the left hand side there filament bulb what shape is that going to be a decreasing gradient okay never coming down to a negative gradient they're always positive gradient and a diode has no gradient at all, no current in the negative direction and a positive direction after a certain voltage, after what we call the knee voltage, after about 0.7 um, volts. So this might be a slide to come back to or part of the video to come back to if you're not sure of this one. 
Okay, so solving circuit problems, a lot of people find that quite tricky. Solving circuit problems is about remembering all how all the different parts of circuits relate to each other. So in a series circuit, current is the same at every point. In a series circuit, the PD across the components adds up to the PD across the supply. If you think about what a voltage is, well, a voltage is a um, energy per unit charge. So in other words, in series, then each component in turn is using up some of the energy per unit charge. So the supply adds up to the each bit that's been used, each energy used over each resistor. In parallel, um, also sorry, resistances in series, then um, net resistance is some of the individual resistances. In parallel, um, then the current adds up to the current through the branches. So the current through the supply adds up to all the currents in the, uh, or rather all the currents in the branches add up to the current through the supply. Um, the potential difference though is the same in every branch because you can think of it like as a direct connection back to the power supply for each branch. And if you add parallel branches, then you always reduce overall resistance, net resistance. Okay, next one to remember is your LDRs and thermistors bit. So LDRs have a graph that looks like this, so they increase the light intensity and reduce the resistance, but at a decreasing rate. If uh, this is a thermistor symbol there, so in the bottom left, uh, thermistors, uh, again, resistance decreases as temperature increases. So all you really need to remember for these variable resistors that are affected by the environment is that they, uh, resistance decreases with their kind of particular stimulus. So um, the same shape of graph, but there you go. And potential divide is a bit that people find hard, but um, really it's not that tricky. I'm going to come back on the screen so you can... Am I? <laughs> Uh, potential dividers, um, that's the bit just up there over on the other side of the screen, is um, it's not as tricky really as, as it makes out. Really, it's just a case of sharing out the uh, potential difference, in this case 6 volts, okay, between the top and the bottom, in the ratio of the resistances. So the ratio of these two resistances is 1 to 2, uh, 10 to 20 is 1 to 2, so therefore there's one part over the bottom one, which is 2 volts, and two parts over the top one, which is the remaining four volts. So potential dividers are just a matter of sharing out the uh, potential difference in the resistance, in the ratio of the resistances. Okay, next bit. Um, so power, what is electrical power is current times voltage. Okay, it's just a product of current and voltage, that's all. Um, next one. So again, power is also I squared R, so it's current squared times resistance. So this is a good calculation if you are just given the current and the resistance. And also, um, it's the explanation that current causes heating. So remember that equation as power loss equals. As basically the electrons collide with the metal atoms or ions, more frequent collisions make them, make them vibrate more. So temperature increases and um, you get more frequent collisions again, so the resistance increases. And it's another way of working out the electrical power if you just have current and resistance. Is this helpful? I hope this is helpful. It's a good like, um, thing for you to like, run through again maybe after as well, just some kind of key bits to memorize ready for your um, exam tomorrow. So Dalton's model then, this is the whole idea of this bit is in there is because evidence changes models. Uh, Dalton uh, was just about them being, atoms being like solid spheres. Thompson is the plum pudding model, so negative electrons within this positive mass. Then Rutherford's model is the um, is the nuclear model, so that is negative electrons orbiting a positive nucleus. And then lastly Bohr model is the explanation of why the electrons stay there, it's because they've got energy. So they're in these energy levels. Um, the evidence for that is the, uh, firstly for Dalton, was conservation of mass. So there were solid spheres that were different to one another, so oxygen was different to carbon, etc. Uh, Thompson's evidence was cathode ray tubes, and Rutherford's evidence was alpha particle scattering. So alphas did not all go straight through the atom. We've got a slide on this in a second. And lastly, the Bohr model, the electron energy stops the electron just spiraling into the nucleus. Okay, so alpha particle scattering, there's a little thing there. So most alpha particles went straight through. Uh, that was okay, but in terms of the plum pudding, it should have been all. Some were deflected though, that's path two there and very few turned back the way they came. So that was the amazing one, and Rutherford said it's like 
the alpha particles it's like a, a artillery shell hitting a um a piece of tissue paper and coming back the way it came so it was amazing at the time you have to remember the atom is approximately 10 to the minus 10 diameter and the nucleus is approximately 10 to the minus 15 so the nucleus is positive and it's uh, where all the mass is concentrated so it's, it's absolutely tiny compared to the atom and all the mass and positive charge is in that same place radioactivity then so it's a random uh, phenomenon radioactivity nuclei decay to become more stable um, decay equations I think are really straightforward but you need to remember the like code for all the different uh, types of decay so beta is 0 and minus 1 minus 1 charge and you just have to make top line and bottom line balance so 14 equals something plus 0 it's going to be 14 on the top line 6 is uh, 7 minus minus 1 basically so you just make the top and bottom lines balance separately from each other and then this is an alpha decay so 240 is something plus 4 so that's 236 94 is something plus 2 so that's going to be 92 the different types of radiation here alpha beta and gamma um, what they are is just on this little bit here so the, pho the, uh, the gamma is a photon of high frequency electromagnetic radiation very high energy it's the lowest ion ionization so it's the um, it's the highest penetration that slide should say there absorbed by thick lead or, or concrete so I hope that's okay with everybody there we'll get there's a couple of good questions so I'll chat about them at the end um, half-life is quite straightforward really they might give you a graph or you might have to kind of count through that but remember half-life is the average time taken but so many people think is like the number half like so if the activity there is 250 a lot of people think the half-life would be 125 no it's the time taken to get to 125 could be activity could be nuclei um, so when you're talking about dangers and uses always talk about half-life and the type of radiation emitted so um, that then the two hazards with radiation are contamination and irradiation. Remember, contamination is the thing becomes a source after something's got onto it. So because a radioactive material has got onto something, it has become a radioactive source itself. It's been contaminated. Irradiation, though, once, once it's been hit by a radioactive particle, it's no longer radioactive. And a half-life on this graph, okay, you show on the... Um, on the graph how you are making the half-life show that you're doing interpolation from a half down to the time axis and then read it off you should really do at least two and then half it so the two half-lives you see where i've done the quarter line just here is 153 seconds roughly down there and half of that would be 77.5 okay um two more slides then fission and fusion Fission is large nuclei splitting to form smaller ones is the basic definition of it there. Remember in both these nuclear reactions, mass is converted to energy by e equals mc squared and um, two or three neutrons basically go on to cause other fissions. That's why you get this chain reaction. And this can be controlled by just capturing those neutrons using control rods. And it has, importantly, this is bad, it's not as good as fusion because it, fusion doesn't have radioactive products so uh, fission does fusion doesn't be really careful with your spelling of fission and fusion by the way because if they're slightly wrong then they are wrong um, they look too much like each other lastly fusion then small nuclei fuse or join to become larger ones uh, you need high temperature and pressure to give the nuclei enough kinetic energy to bring them together to fuse. So they need to get close enough to actually fuse, basically. Um, again, mass is converted to energy and a massive amount of energy in fusion, more than in fission. One good thing about it is it stops once the fuel runs out and the only product is helium, which is not a hazard. Right, okay, thanks very much. Um, yeah, did I not put the... I didn't put the fields one in there, did I? Um, I've got the... If you stick around sloths for the... Um, OCR one then then I have got the I'm pretty sure I've got the uh, I'm pretty sure I've got the um, slide for I'm pretty sure I've got the slide for uh, static electricity on that one there so I'm going to be back shortly I'm going to be back at quarter two so I'm going to go pretty quickly but if you want to stick around to the end of the OCR and ask any questions any any good questions somebody's asked Rachel's asked um, any six marker with calculations are always tricky it's better to say more points and not to miss out yeah i would say so use the extra paper don't be shy uh, but do try and be concise plan with the question how, how you know what do you need to cover basically um what is the question telling you you need to cover plan with the question and then um that is always going to do 
plan with the question. That's basically the question is going to tell you everything you're going to need to do. And if you if you use the question to plan your answer, then you're not going to um, you're not going to miss anything out. And that's the most important thing about the six marks is not missing things out. It is okay to use bullet points, but they should be full sentences. So I, I would make that the one time you don't just bullet point your point your answer. The six mark I would write prose. Um, it definitely has to be full sentences for that question. Uh, yeah, sloughs. Yeah, it, it, most of the questions I like as an examiner, I like to read bullet points because it is like this person knows this point, this point, this point. But we want linked prose uh, in the um, we want linked prose in the six markers. Hi, Lewis. Yeah, great to see you. Um, I, I don't know if you're streaming uh, for before the exam. Uh, you, do you want to tell everyone if you're coming on a little bit later? I'm going to do OCR uh, next. Yes, <laughs> so Lewis. Yeah. I think he's he's promoted to Lord pretty much, you know, the amount of work that he's been putting in. Um incredible. Um he can be Lord Lewis and I'll be Sir Gorilla if you like. Uh E, e equals Q V is what a Van de Graaff generator doesn't kill you. Yeah, basically, um the, there's a whole lot of uh there's a very high voltage, there's a whole lot of energy per unit charge, but the point is that the um there's not enough charge flowing through you at a high enough rate, so the current is very low. Um because you've got a high resistance so there's not a high power so there isn't a high energy dissipated in you tommy's here oh bless you um yeah hi tommy yeah uh, a level physics is is litty so oh, okay so um i don't know what tom tommy's probably trying to tell you a level physics is hard but you, you can do this guys you can absolutely do this i'm gonna go and i'm gonna come back in a minute if that's all right with everyone do you need to know the process of chain reaction yeah i think you need to just know that um you might want to double check in the specification with that one. Okay, um, I think you just need to know that. You, you, yeah, you need to be able to know this leads to this. It leads to this. The neutrons go on to cause more f um, fissions. Basically, exams that didn't go to plan. Uh, how do you mean? <laughs> do you mean that they? Um, you know, afterwards. Okay, or during them. Okay, I think if you're getting uh, frustrated, if you're getting kind of uh, nervous and you're getting kind of thing, oh no gosh looking at the time and everything like that and it's not going well you need to pause and calm yourself down so I don't know if you heard at the start of that stream especially I was a bit like all over the place I just needed to slow myself down and I just kind of um, you know took a little pause and I thought about what I was doing and it didn't really matter too much um, you, you know that's important in the exam just sort of pause reset yourself and uh, do it in a kind of methodical way so yeah on to ocra next okay does it matter which one transfers electrons when two things are up to go we'll talk about that in the next one lily okay i'm going to drop the stream now thanks very much for um for being with me and listening with me that's this stream ended i'll be back in a moment with ocra stuff <laughs>